Good morning, I'm the Busy Bee Mom. Welcome to my sewing room. Today we're working on making some um, hospital gowns, the kind that um, open in the back. I always want to call it a, so that'd be like an isolation gown. I'm not sure what the technical term is. Um, I'm using the, from Iowa Department of Public Health, they have guidance for Iowans to sew cloth gowns for healthcare providers. And they have some basic instructions, measurements, and then they give two websites below that have patterns and instructions and stuff. But I'm going to walk you through what I'm doing because this is kind of confusing, I think. So in order to get a pattern, what I did is I'm actually using a men's dress shirt as my starting launching point. It's just an old pattern, probably discontinued, 70-30 simplicity. Um, it's just a men's button-up shirt, so not real fussy there. So what we're going to do to alter our pattern is first thing for the front piece, now normally on a men's dress shirt it opens in the front, but we want to do the opposite. We want to have the front be one solid piece. So my men's front pattern piece, here's your you know, arm, shoulder, neck. If you go down the front here, you've got a whole bunch of lines, but one right here is labeled center front. I want to fold this on that center front line. And then I'm going to place that on my fabric on the fold line. Move down just a little bit so you can see the whole thing. So instead of cutting it in half, we're actually going to place it on our fold line. And we're going to cut it out on a fold. Now, the Iowa Department of Public Health has instructions for how wide it needs to be. So I can check that. It's 22 so that for a small, so that would be about 11. So I'm at 11 and a half. So if you think about my seam allowance, that's about perfect. And then it's 29 for the large, so that's about, what, 30 is 15, 14 and a half. So it's a little bit small for the large. So if I needed it to be a little bit bigger, depending on your widths, we could just move it over and then pin it and then you would just extend that line out. So let's go right about, I think right about there. And then the other thing we need to do is we need to lengthen it because obviously these gowns need to be more like a skirt length. So my measurements for this, I have it shows from the armpit down for the small is 31, the armpit down for the large is 32. So about 33 if you add seam allowance. So we want to go down about 33 inches. I'm going to have to move up. 33 is right about there. And they have a different width from the bottom for the, they've got 34.5. So you would take half of that and come out, find that point, and then I just draw a straight line from there to there. So that gets me my new bottom measurement, my new length and width. And then you just cut it out, and that is your front section. For the back section, Normally the back would be all one piece. We're going to do the opposite. We're going to cut it down the back. So this is my back pattern piece. It says to put it on the fold and cut it out. Well, I'm still going to put it on the fold, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to then take my scissors and cut, you know, hold them. Can't find anything. Um, these aren't my fabric scissors, but for demonstration, I would just take my scissors and then go along and cut that right down where it would normally be folded. But first, we got to do one thing, though. If you think about it, it needs to overlap in the back. And one of the other patterns I saw called for an 8-inch overlap. So we're going to move this over. Obviously, my fabric's not... I'd have to move my fabric. We're going to move it actually down 8 inches. This takes up a lot of fabric. So move it down 8 inches, and then you'd also have it to move it up. Once again, you have to do your side seam. So it would be the same length and width as the other one, so we'd have to move it up. So, okay, 
that just gives you a general idea of what you do. So the back, you need to cut it in half, but you need to add 8 inches and then add length. The front, you need to find where your center line is, place that on the fold of your fabric to cut it out, and then add your length. The sleeves, um, you just need to add some length to your sleeves because if you think about it, a men's dress shirt has a cuff that you add. Um, it's a separate piece of fabric. This we're going to do, we're just going to fold up that fabric to make the cuff and put elastic in it. So you want to add a couple inches to the bottom of that and just come out. Um, you see how this is at an angle? Don't extend that angle because when you go to make the cuff, it doesn't fold right. S straighten it out. Come down um, straight. You know, this is your center straight line. You want to be the same as that. Come down straight. Because you want that top of that and the bottom of that to be the same length so it folds. Alright, so there's your basic cutting instructions. You need two sleeves, one front piece, and two backs. And I'm going to get those cut out and then I'll be back and we'll work on how to put the thing together. All right, um, one more thing we need to alter with your front piece. So you can see this is your front piece. There's your arm, shoulder, neck edge. This is our center front line that we're going to fold on that line. One issue I run into, and this is not low enough, this neck edge. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to drop that about two and a half inches at least. So let's say we're going to make some large ones. There's my extra large line, extra large ones. We're going to come down about two and a half inches. And then we're just going to redraw, come over a little bit, and just open that up a little bit because I found it's too small. So just like that, open that up a little bit. And then you do the same for you know, each size that you're doing. Create new lines. Open that neck edge up because it's really tight when you wear it. Alright, here we go. Okay, so this is my front piece. It's all one big section. And then I'm going to take my back pieces. I just had them. They're going to look the same. So this is one of your back sections. And you're going to lay it Match up your side seam, match up your shoulder seam, then you're going to pin those. Pin your side seams and your shoulder seams. Now um, this pattern actually has a tuck at the top, so I'm also going to include that little tuck. And don't worry, you will have extra just hanging floppy here, that's okay. So line that up, pin that, your shoulder and your side, and then do the same for the other side. Line up your side seam and your shoulder seam, pin it, and then stitch it. Just a quick tip when pinning, um, I forgot to mention this earlier, start, when you pin your side seam, start at your armpit and go down from there. And that way if these two pieces aren't quite the same length, the difference ends up at the bottom. Don't worry about it, we can trim it off. And if your shoulder seam, start here at your shoulder and go in. Because then you have that overlap. It doesn't really matter if they don't line up quite right. Just start at your shoulder and go towards your neck. So there it's all pinned and we'll go sew it. All right, I got my two side seams sewn. One, two, and my two shoulder seams sewed as far as I could go. So you have this overlap and you have your neck edge. Now we're gonna work on the sleeves. I have a serger, so I've just been throwing it in my serger. It works really good and easy to get those seams done. If you don't have a serger, sew it on your regular sewing machine. And you'll have to do something to seal those seams, zigzag them, um, 
do like a flat felled seam or a French seam or whatever. Pins. So for the sleeves, you just fold it, pin it, and then sew it down that side. And that would be your under sleeve edge. Um, sleeves typically are not, there's a front and a back to them. So they should be mirror images of each other. They look like they would be reversible. I'm not sure. I think it kind of depends on the pattern. I just always make sure that they're mirror images and I have them on correctly. If you notice when you um, have a tissue paper pattern, it has little notches areas that you cut and that helps you keep everything lined up. So there's one of them. I have two notches right there. So for the next one, I want to have those, right now my notches are on the bottom, so on this one I'm going to put my notches on the top, and that way I'll know that these two are mirror images of each other. All right, I'm going to pin this one, and then I'll serge both of these along that side edge. Okay, I serged my two side seams on my sleeves. Now, taking your gown, you want to have it inside out. Lay it on the table, take your sewn sleeve, turn it right side out, and now I need to make sure my notches are going to line up to figure out if this is on the right side. That's my cuff. And that's the wrong sleeve, the notches are in the wrong place. This is my would this be my left side? It's really confusing having the opening in the back. It's just totally turned around backwards. All right, so inside out, right side out. I'm going to take this. I'm going to put it in there. See, my sleeve is now in the hole. And I am going to pin in my armpit spot. Get those seams lined up. Scissor snips. Get that out of the way. Now, I'm going to go from the armpit to the shoulder on both sides, pinning as I go. I will have extra fabric. Normally when you do this, you have to ease in the fullness. Don't worry about that. Just line it up and pin it. So you get to the shoulder spot, go from the um, bottom to the top on both sides. So I went from up the, well, left or right side, depending on how you look at it. And then I'm going to start over at the bottom and go up the other side from the armpit to the shoulder. One. I'm doing this kind of quickie so I can show you guys. All right. The top, I don't know if you can see that, I have extra fabric because I didn't ease in the fullness. What I'm going to do with that extra fabric, I'm just going to flatten it like that. And it's going to make basically like a pleat at the top of the shoulder. All right, let me just show you real quick what I was talking about. I don't think you could see from way over there. So here's your armhole. You have your two layers of fabric. That middle layer, I have a bunch of extra middle inside. Sorry, I just ran up the stairs. Inside layer, I have all this extra. So I'm just going to flatten it out. And pin it down like that and it's going to give you like a pin tuck so we're just going to serge that now around and do both sleeves okay it's always exciting to get to this stage because it's actually taking shape now we have our left piece and a right piece and two sleeves in the front so now we're going to start taking care of some of our raw edges First, Rodges, we're going to work on our 
our back opening. We should have those two long pieces, a left and a right piece, and then our bottom hem. Let me show you something really quick. See how my bottom hem didn't quite line up there? It's all right. Just chop it off. Take that, angle it off to another spot, and you go down. And just take that, make a nice angle, gradually there. I need a new blade. Okay. So, there. Your hem's not quite level. Just level it off. That one was a little better. Could use just a little bit of level. You can eye that one. Boop. Okay. Where were we? Hemming. <laughs> So for these edges, what I do is I take my iron, imagine I'm on my ironing board and it's hot, it's not. I'm just going to fold it over about a quarter of an inch, I usually just eye it, go all the way down, press it really good, and then I'm going to fold it over again about an inch and press it again. I find if I press it really good then I don't have to pin it, just steam it really good. So. Do that, both of those edges. I like to do the left and right side first, and then I'll do the same thing to the bottom. Just turn it over about a quarter of an inch, press it, turn it over again about an inch, press it again, and then stitch it. And I like to just stitch right along that edge, as close as I can get to that edge without going over. All right, back to sewing. All right, we've got our side edges and our bottom hemmed, so raw edges are in case. Now we're going to go up to our neck opening. So here's my neck opening. I'm going to take some double fold bias tape. I'm using half inch, just quicker that way. You can get by with narrower, but then it's a little bit harder. Pins. Um, traditionally when you put on bias tape, let's see, you take the shorter, see how one end is longer than the other? You take the shorter one, you open it up. Place it on your inside, stitch along there, and then fold it over to the right side and stitch along there. Well, I ain't got time for that. And that's the beauty of using the wider, is I can just squish it in there and pin it and sew it. So start on my end, overlap, fold it over, and fold it down and pin. That pin is not sharp. Okay, and we're just going to go along, put it in there, hold it over, pin it. We're going to do all the way around to the other side. Sometimes it gets kind of messy in the joint here. Trim that off, and then if one sticks up a little bit higher than the other one, you can kind of trim it if you need to, even it off. So, but pin it all the way around, and then I'm going to stitch it. And I like to zigzag stitch it, and that way, if this is up a little bit too high, I'm not going to drop it. Sorry, I'm going to just um, zigzag it. Not a big zigzag, um, a small kind of a wide zigzag, and that way I make sure that I don't accidentally miss the back part but I'll do a small zigzag along the edge. Alright, I've pinned it all the way to the other end. I just don't cut it before you put it on, just because it'll shift when you pin it. So the best thing is just to pin it, and then when you get to the end, I just cut off the extra, move that out of the way. Same thing we did on the other side. Put it in there. I like to fold that over, fold that down. Pin it, and that gives you a nice encased edge there. Okay, neck edge is done. On to the cuffs. Where's my sleeve? Turn your garment inside out. Then you're going to fold over just like you did before about a quarter of an inch and you're going to press it and then you're going to fold it over again 
and press it, but you need to leave a big enough area when they're your second fold that your elastic will fit in there. So if you're using a thin elastic, you can have a thinner cuff. If it's thicker, you need bigger. And I always lay my elastic on it so I can kind of see. Yeah, it looks like I have room to stitch and room for the elastic. So you want to be your elastic plus about a quarter of an inch just so you have room to play with it to get it in there. So press that. You're going to press it about a quarter of an inch and then up enough to fit that elastic. And then you want to sew it, but when you sew it, leave a gap. Leave about two inches open. Okay? All right, we got that um, stitched. Quick tip, um, I turned it back right side out, and then when I stitched it, I put it in my machine like this, so I was stitching along like this. Da, 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 da. Some people might be tempted to try to put it in like this and stitch it, but it's, you always end up stitching something down that you shouldn't have stitched, so it's best to flip it and then get it from this way so it goes in your machine like that. Hope that makes sense. Anyway. All right, I left a gap, and we're going to take a chunk of elastic. Um, the one pattern said eight inches, which is too big for my wrist. But so I think when I make some smaller ones, I might go maybe more like a seven inch. But I have really small wrists, and my husband has really big wrists, so it's hard for me to know. I have this problem when um, things don't come with exact measurements. I am petite. My husband is the opposite, so I don't have anybody average height, weight around here. Now you're going to take a safety pin. <laughs> take a safety pin, and you're going to thread it through your casing. It sounds like somebody is mowing and it is literally about 35 degrees outside today. So, ooh. If you're worried about this slipping in, just pin it real quick. And that way it's not going to go anywhere. I was using thinner elastic for this and it's easier to work with, but I'm out of the thinner, so I'm back to the thick. Okay, I've come all the way back around. I'm trying to pull that through just a little bit more. You want to get both ends together and then you're going to pull and get as much slack as you can. There. And then I like to overlap them. And then I'm going to stitch them together. I'm going to go like this, just back and forth. See if I can get that in my machine. All right, you can see how I just sewed it back and forth real quick across there a couple times. We're going to Pull it in. Hopefully there's no twist. That's the worst when you get this point and then you realize you got a big twist in it. Get it in there. Uh oh. I didn't, did I? No. Anyway, once you get it situated, and then you're going to go and pull this in your machine and stitch it shut. All right, cuffs are done. Now we're going to work on shutting it. So we're going to take um, Velcro. This is my neck opening, my overlap flaps. So on the top flap, I pinned a piece of Velcro. Now it'll go like that. And then on my other flap, I'm going to pin my other piece of Velcro. I'm just going a little bit down from my um, bias tape. And then I want to stop about 
kind of using that seam line to know where my ends should be. I'm not going to go any farther than that. So pin it to show you where that goes. The other way you could do it would be to make um, a tie, in which case I think what you could do is you could put attach a tie to this end and then put a tie on this end, but where this stopped you'd want it to start. So you'd want to put the tie pretty much from like here. Does that make sense? So imagine you have a chunk of something to tie it with. I would sew it like here, sew down this part, and just let it dangle. Because you don't want it to be where the Velcro would be, because the Velcro is where they would overlap, but you want the strap to be past that point. So put a strap on this end and a strap there. But right now I'm doing Velcro, so. And they've attached themselves. So I'm going to sew those two down, and then we just need to do a waist something. All right, we've got our Velcro done, so our neck edge is holding together. And then we need something to hold it at the waist. Now you could put straps just like you did up above down below, or you could do the belt method. I'm going to do, show you how to do the belt method. So you need a strip that's about 3 inches wide by 64 inches long for the um, large size. Probably make it a little shorter for the small. And then I'm just going to fold that in half. I'm going to stitch down. I'm not going to um, curve that under. Then stitch. And I'll do the same thing on the other side when I get to the other side before I sew off the end. Oh, it's already kind of laying that way. Um, have it just a little bit over like that. All right, let me go stitch that. Okay, I've got a tube. Now we're going to turn our tube right side out. Once again, using my trusty safety pin. I'm going to flip it to the inside. It's hard to get started, but once you get it going, it usually is pretty slick. There we go. Scrunch it a little bit. And then Pull it. Do that all the way to the other side. And then you want to press it flat. When you cut this, try to make sure that you're following the grain line of your fabric, that you have a nice salvage edge that you can um, work from to make sure you get it nice and straight. Otherwise, it's going to want to curl when you press it. And I can already tell when I sewed this one. I, apparently, I was not straight with the grain, and it's going to want to curl on me. But it is what it is. Alright, after, um, well I pressed it, and I always just press it with the seam in the middle. If you try to do it along the edge, it's just really hard to get it flat. So press it, just have it in the middle, and then edge stitch it all the way up and down the sides. And I edge stitch it so that when you wash it, it will stay flat, still have that belt shape. Then we're going to pin it to our garment. For a large, I'm going to go down 21 inches, thereabouts. I think for a small, medium, more like maybe 17 or 18, down and then find my middle, pinned it, and then I've gone about 3 inches on either side of that, so I have about a 6 inch total. And I'm going to sew along the top, up and down the side, and along the bottom, and up and down the side a little bit, and that'll anchor that to the front of the garment. All right, we got our belt sewn onto the front. Let me give you a close-up of that. Basically, just sewed it on t six inches worth of it onto the front of the garment, part way down. So now it'll tie in the back and Velcro at the top. So that's how I make a gown. Um, the local nursing home wanted some, so I think this is number four. I've got four done. And I'm just using like broadcloth or poly cotton blends. Some of these were um, top sheets that were still serviceable. And one was a chunk of fabric I had a coworker who bought. I think she was going to put it on a bulletin board. Anyway, she just changed her mind and gave it to me randomly. So 
Hope this helps. Um, good luck sewing and um, stay safe and healthy. Have a good day.